Today, we're diving deep into the transformative power of your thoughts and emotions. You see, the elevated emotion is the secret sauce, the carrier of your thoughts. It's the energy, the frequency that carries information to the universe. And here's the kicker. The faster the frequency, the higher the energy. Combine that with a crystal clear intention and you've got a laser-like focus, creating a more coherent signature. Why is coherence so important? Well, let me tell you. When your brain and heart are in sync, when they dance together in a harmonious rhythm, something magical happens. We've measured it. It's not just hocus pocus. Coherent brain, coherent heart. That's the recipe for the extraordinary. Now, here's the real deal. It's not just about feeling gratitude. I mean, sure, gratitude is fantastic, but an elevated emotion alone won't change matter. You've got to combine it with a clear intention. We've done experiments and it's crystal clear. It's the dynamic duo of intention and emotion that gets the job done. Imagine you want a new home or a beautiful garden. It's not wishful thinking alone. It's about ripping out magazine pictures, drawing, visualizing, and writing down your dreams. You toss it up on your vision board, add more dreams, and keep your conscious mind fixated on that vision. Your subconscious will follow suit. Now, I'm not preaching impatience here. Impatience signals doubt in the manifestation process. We're here to savor life, to relish in the magnificence of our creations. Creating your dream reality is like tending to a garden, pulling weeds, pruning branches, fertilizing. It takes time, but oh, the joy of eating the fruits of your own creation. Your senses should be the last to experience what your mind has crafted. The intention holds all the details, but you can summarize it in a symbol, a letter, one powerful picture. Hold that image, that symbol of your dream home or garden, and don't say, I'll be happy when it happens. Instead say, I am. The thought I'm having is the experience. When you open your heart, it's not just an emotional shift, it's a magnetic field shift. Did you know that an open heart can produce a measurable magnetic field up to three meters wide? That's the power of frequency, of energy. And guess what? That energy carries information and intent. Picture this, you're feeling gratitude, your heart wide open, and you're broadcasting energy into the field. That frequency lays down the intent of your thought, whether it's about your health or wealth. But here's the catch. If you're suffering, that energy doesn't carry the thought of wealth. It carries a different set of thoughts. To believe in the future you're imagining, your heart must be open and activated. You've got to know how to self-regulate. The moment you disconnect from the energy of your future due to life circumstances, you've got to snap back into it. It's a skill, a practice, but it's worth every ounce of effort. Imagine having a community of like-minded individuals all practicing this daily. They're connected to their future, wanting it more than the emotions of the past. Together, they create a powerful force, a collective energy that amplifies the manifestation process. Now, let's talk about relationships, a topic close to many hearts. I've got a fundamental principle for you. Never work in a relationship. If you're working at it, something's off. Bring your best self, let your partner bring their best self and celebrate life together. That's constructive interference, that's growth. If you're not at your best, if you're not feeling the love, it's time to take a step back. Remove yourself for a while, get back into your heart and present your best self. Don't pick apart your partner or the relationship. Instead, focus on being the best version of yourself. Here's a game changer. Would you go out with you? It's a fundamental question that can reshape your entire approach to relationships. So many people have twisted definitions of love. Some see it as need, others as sexuality, control, dominance, or success. But let me tell you, true love is something else entirely. True love isn't about need or control. It's about happiness. If you want a loving relationship, start by creating happiness in your life. It's not just about romantic love. It extends to familial relationships, friendships, 
and beyond. Now let's connect the dots between thoughts and feelings. Thoughts are like an electrical charge, feelings like a magnetic charge. Together, they create an electromagnetic signature that influences every atom in your life. Your thought sends a signal, and the feeling is the magnetic field that draws the event back to you. Imagine life as a magnetic field, and your emotions are the magic that makes it work. Now here's the thing, if you're not vibing with life, if anger, judgment, or fear have set up camp in your heart, that magnetic field, well, it's not there. And without that magnetic pull, your dream of a loving relationship might be a bit like trying to catch a rainbow without rain. Sure, you might have all those fancy pictures of your dream life, the visualizations that make you feel like you're on a mental vacation, and the intentions, oh, they're there, written down and shining like a beacon. But hold up, there's a missing puzzle piece. It's called the right emotional state. Yep, it's the secret sauce that activates the magnetic field, bringing your dreams closer, making them more real than your favorite bedtime story. Let's get real about emotional reactions. We all have them. Life throws curveballs, and sometimes those stress hormones come out to play. Suddenly, you're not feeling like your usual superhero self. Instead, you're stuck in a cloud of emotions that make you believe only what you can see. It's like wearing glasses that filter out all the good stuff, leaving you with a limited view. Now here's the kicker. If your emotional response weakens your inner superhero, your organism, you might unknowingly slip into the role of a victim. Picture this. You've got dreams, wishes, and a list of things you'd love to experience, but it's like you're trying to pull a cart with a flat tire. Your response to life's twists weakens your pull, your magnetic field. And let's be real. Being a victim isn't fun. It's like being stuck in a never-ending loop of why me and life's not fair. But guess what? Life isn't about being a passenger in your own story. It's about being the driver, the one with the steering wheel in hand, navigating through the twists and turns. So how do you avoid this victimhood trap? It starts with awareness. Take a moment to notice your emotional reactions. Are they steering you towards joy, love, and growth, or are they pushing you into the pit of despair? Because here's the truth. You have the power to choose your response, to shift from victim to victor. Trading survival emotions for elevated ones is a daily practice. You might say, I can't open my heart. I can't feel love. Well, what are you practicing feeling? Whatever you practice feeling, that's what you'll feel most of the time. If it's guilt and you're so used to it, it just feels like you. Think about a significant event in your life, one with a strong emotional charge. If you don't feel like your normal self, if your alarm system is on high alert, it's time to take notice. It's time to stop and ask yourself why. So here's the bottom line, don't ignore this. Your thoughts, your emotions, they're not just random occurrences, they're the architects of your reality. You won't be the same after understanding the power you hold within. Embrace it, practice it, and watch your life transform in ways you never thought possible.